We're with, with Kia today, right now. The Kia K4 just debuted, just now, global debut. Just two different models, a hatchback and a regular car. Joining me now is Steve Center, COO of Kia of America. So Steve, talk to us about this K4 here, debuted just now. How does it fit into the mix of Kia's portfolio? We're very excited about K4. It will eventually become our entry sedan. And the sedans are very popular because of their affordability and their size. And uh, the K4 comes in uh, two body styles. This is the four door. It also comes in a five door sporty wagon. And we're very excited about that because it's going to attract a lot of young customers to Kia for the first time. It's interesting because the, the, the K4 is not an EV, it's not a hybrid, it's a traditional gas powered car. Right. But Kia also known for its EV9 that won North American Car of the Year just earlier today. The EV6, which is sporty and a, a smaller sort of a crossover type of vehicle. So Kia kind of doing two different paths here. Is that sort of the strategy for you going Absolutely. forward? Has that changed at all? Absolutely, we're still investing in our internal combustion line of cars and we're investing to build out our EV line of cars. So where you'll see Kia within the next couple of years is two full lines of cars. So depending on where you are, what, what you need or what your preferences are, there'll be an EV for you or there'll be an internal combustion for you. And you kind of envision that, that dual path going on for, for years to for come. Quite, quite some time until the transition's complete, whenever that is. So no real pivot though from, let's say, going more EV to back to traditional or, or no, vice versa? No, and we're still growing. Uh, we're growing overall, and we're still growing on the ICE side. So it, it gives us a chance to be able to fund all of these projects. So before we talk about kind of bigger picture stuff with the industry, I want to quickly talk, talk to you about what's happening in Baltimore with the port situation, that awful situation there at the bridge. Some automakers have been impacted by that port closing. What's going on with Kia? I know that Kia obviously imports we, a lot of cars, but they also build in the United States too. Yes, we do. We have a factory in uh, West Georgia, and uh, we're building the Hyundai Motor Group Meta plant uh, outside of Savannah. Um, I, when I saw that on the news, I, I was absolutely horrified. But we got on the phone, and actually, we don't use that port. So it won't affect our business at all. But in a sense, it still will, because that port is closed until they can clean that up and uh, reopen the waterway. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, the other ports are going to have to pick up the load, and we use some of those ports. So you're going to end up with congestion in Newark and other places. So basically, there's going to be some spillover effects here and there. Uh, and for the everybody. Industry, yeah. Everybody. So big picture looking at the American auto market, the U.S. auto market, which you're, which you're in charge of here, or a COO of. Uh, do you see it growing? Is it, is it, is it sort of, is there, is there tenuousness on the, on the part of the consumer or are they, from Kia's point of view, still wanting to buy new cars? There's un, unmet demand there. Absolutely, I think um, a, a lot of things have changed in the last 12, 12 months. So the supply chain is pretty much recovered. You don't hear about those problems anymore. The manufacturing's caught up. Competitors that were uh, more um, disproportionately hurt by the supply chain are back, so the market share is starting to rebalance a little bit. So we're trying to hold on to what we gained over the past few years. The interest rates are a little higher now. Um, dealers have inventory now, so the uh, over MSRP pricing has been uh, reduced or eliminated in many cases. So it's a more normal market. Would you say that Kia's customers have been impacted by these higher rates, these higher for longer rates we've seen? Everyone has, and quite frankly, I'm old enough to think that these aren't so high. When I began my career in the automobile business, the interest rates were 21%. So it was pretty crazy then. But um, they've been very low, unusually low, historically low for a long time. So the price of the, the same car is now more expensive because most people finance the cars by leasing or taking a loan out. And, and that's troubling for consumers. You had a lot of inflation unrelated to the cars that's eaten up their disposable income. So it, it's troubling. You know, uh, at the show today, I've been noticing a lot of the Korean automakers and Japanese automakers really putting a full, full force of, of, of products out here today. Uh, and talking about Kia, sister brand Hyundai, and also Genesis, I think a lot of Americans are kind of curious, how does that relationship work? Is one, one market, one sub-market, or is, I, my understanding is Kia kind of covers all of them, right? Yeah, we cover uh, everything. We um, have an interesting relationship. We're sort of separate companies. We're sort of managed separately, but there is some overlap in areas where you can gain efficiency uh, of scale. 
So in some cases we're competing directly, in some cases we don't cover the same segments. One of the things that we're working to introduce is a line of what we call purpose-built vehicles, which are work vans. Mm -hmm. And that's a completely new business for us, and we've got them running in the range from small to large, and they're electric. And there are a lot of companies uh, like cable TV companies and delivery companies that are just aching for these types of vehicles. So that's all new business uh, for Kia because we're the only ones doing that. So there's commercial as well as kind of consumer-based products here. And Absolutely. We haven't seen those at the show yet, but we're seeing a lot of really cool looking EVs and also K4. So Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.